find joy flowing clear to the sky sun moon and stars forgot upward I fly still all my songs shall be To thee, near to thee, to thee, to thee, Yes, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the song that was sung by Jenna. Thank you for the words talking about drawing us nearer, nearer to you, God. We ask that is our prayer this morning, God, that you continue to draw us nearer to you as we dive into the word of God on today. Today, we're talking about it's time and how we are agents of change. God is about to take us from one destination into the next destination. It is time to flow in where God has called us. I'm reminded of Genesis 1 and 1, where it talks about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Sometimes we're in a transitional place in our life. And that scripture reminded me, if God created the heavens and the earth, God is also asking us to be co-creators here on the earth. So the question I even had to ask myself is what am I supposed to create? And the question we have to ask ourselves is what are we supposed to individually create and collectively create? What is the next chapter in your life that you're entering into? Where are you in life and what new beginning are you about to embark on as we wind down this year and as we go into 2024? Psalms 104 and 19 says, he has made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for seven. I'm going to say it again. He made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. What season are you in? What season are you in? When the scripture talks about he made the moon to mark the seasons, I started thinking about, you know, just where I am in life, where we all should be thinking about where are we in life? What season am I in and what season am I going into? When we look at Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, it says, for everything there is a season and a time for every every matter under heaven. In Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Sometimes we go through life and we hit bumps and roads and we hit mountains, we hit challenges, but God is asking us to look again at our situation. And the scripture reminds us in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11, and it says, he's made everything beautiful, even the challenges, even the dark nights, even the moments when we're not sure what's about to happen next. God is reminding us that he's made everything beautiful in it's time. The scripture goes on to say, he has also set eternity in the human heart. He has set eternity in the human heart. Today, we're talking about it's time. So I was reflecting on scriptures that dealt with times and seasons. And when it said he has set eternity in the human heart, God is also being able to allow us to be able to set the tone for our life. When it says he has set eternity in the human heart, God has passed the baton on to us to carry it out here in the earth. The scripture goes on to say, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. God has allowed us 
to be here in this moment in time in life, in this intersection of leaving from 2023, crossing into 2024. We have the balance of December to really reflect on what God is going to do for us here in the earth and what God want us, what wants to do through us to ourselves and to the community and anyone else is around us. John 9 and 4 says, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who has sent me. Night cometh when no man can work. Sometimes we say, well, I'm gonna do it next week. I'm gonna do it next month. I'm gonna do it then. And we put off the calling that God has placed on our life for whatever reason that might be. I've certainly been there. I've put off the calling. And, and many times for me, it's because of, fear. It's because of doubt. It's because, well, do I have all the resources to make it happen? I really don't know. But the scripture is reminding us as long as it is day, we must do the work of him that sent us. So it's, it didn't say as long as we have the resources. It didn't say if we don't have the fear. It didn't, it didn't say it's as long as it is day. The prerequisite as long as it is day. Daylight, when we wake up, when the dawn, we heard the dawning of a new day, when the daylight breaks, that is go time for us to go to work. That is go time for us to kick into action because it says night is coming when no man can work. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Sometimes we set out for a particular thing to do in life and we hit a detour. God is saying, what is that thing that you may have set out? And I want you to seek me to see if it aligns with the perfect will that I have set for your life. Sometimes, again, I can identify I have set out to do a particular thing and then I will get derailed. I will get detoured because God has to remind me that's not the course for your life. That's not the that's not the steps that I want you to walk into. In their hearts, human human plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Sometimes we question why our steps haven't been established. When you look at the word established, that means it's fixed. That means you're not wobbly. You're not all over the place. When you think of the word established, it is a strong foundation. Sometimes in our business model and different things that we're doing, we we like, what is going on? It's not established. It's not, it's not fixed. Things are moving all over the place. Sometimes we got to go back to God and say, God, is this the place that I'm even supposed to be in? Because things is all over the place. And when we seek God, we have to be ready, ready to wait and hear what he has to say to us. I know for me, I want things, uh, immediate response sometimes, but God reminds me, Catherine, you have to operate in patience. Catherine, you have to sit back and allow me to download to you what those steps are. Don't move in haste and don't move anxiously. Psalms 31 and 15 says, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Sometimes when we're in pursuit of doing things for God, we feel that it's trouble all around us and it's challenges all around us. So we have to go to God and say, listen, it's chaos around me. It's challenges around me. It's naysayers around me. It's people that act like they're my friends, but they're really my enemies. God, I need you to cover me and I need you to protect me. The scripture says my times are in your hand. We have to literally relinquish everything unto God. This morning, we have to let it go and put it at the altar. We have to even give God our time. It says, my times are in your hands. That's what Psalms 31 and 15 said. Again, today we're talking about it's time. It says, my times are in your hands. And so we have to get to a posture in God that we say, God, we give you our time. Literally, but also figuratively. God, I give you my time. And where I may not want to be patient, God, allow me to be patient. Where I may want to move out prematurely, allow my feet not to go too fast when it don't need to. Psalms 90 and 12 says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. It says, teach us to number our days. In other words, this is another uh, scripture in a song that was turned into order my steps in your word. Well, when it says, teach us to number our days, be mindful, be prudent on how you're using your time. That's what I get from that scripture. Teach us how to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We have to be mindful how we're even using our time. How to number our days. God, we got to ask and say, God, listen, we got seven days in a week. We got 24 hours in a day. How do I need to number my days? How do I need to organize my day? How do I need to structure my day? How do I need to structure my week? How do I need to structure the balance of December? So when I cross into 2024, I'm crossing into 2024 with clarity. I'm crossing into 2024 with action steps that I know that has been ordered by you. Second Peter 3, 8 through 9 says, but do not forget... This one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise 
as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I'm gonna read this again. It's 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. But do not forget this one thing. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Sometimes we look at our situations and we're like, why isn't anything turning over? Why isn't anything kicking over? And then God's time clock and our time clock are two different time clocks. So we have to remember that God got us completely, 100%. The scripture says the Lord is not slow to keep in his promise. And we have to remember what are the promises of God on our life. I want you to reflect at this very moment. Think to yourself, what are the promises that God has given you, has spoken to you when nobody else is around? What has God spoken to your heart? What has God spoken to your mind? Think of that. Think about the promise God has given you. Sometimes the enemy will want to psych our mind to think the promise will not turn into a reality. But, but today we're reminding ourselves that the promise is still the promise and it will come to pass. Colossians 4, 5 through 6 says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. This week, I want you to think about what, what what's on your schedule for this week. How can you make the most of every opportunity that God is allowing you to walk into? The scripture goes on to say, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you are to answer everyone. Listen, I am still working in this area. I am still working in terms of knowing how to deal with different dynamics in my life, deal with different dynamics in my family, deal with different dynamics in my business, deal with different dynamics in the community. And I'm saying, God, I need you to help me be more graceful and more seasoned with how I communicate and, and knowing how to respond in different dynamics and situations. The scripture is reminded us as we grow and as we evolve, because the scripture clearly says, make the most of every opportunity. That means if the scripture is saying there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity assigned to your name. So don't allow the enemy to psych you out that the promise will not come to pass. The scripture clearly says there are opportunities waiting for you. And when you walk into that door of opportunity, you're going to have to know how to be full of grace. You're going to have to know how to be seasoned with salt, with how you communicate. And you're going to have to know how to respond to people. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. This is the crust of a lot of the scriptures that I try to remind myself is Jeremiah 29 and 11, because sometimes we forget about what God has said and, and proclaimed over our life. Not what anybody else has proclaimed. People can proclaim stuff over us all the time, but what has God spoken to your heart and your mind? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. This is a reminder. He wants to give us a future. Right now, I want you to think about what is your future looking like for 2024? What will your future look like for 2024? Psalms 31 and 15 says, my times are in your hands. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. It, the scripture reminds us, even as we flow in God, there's gonna be opportunities open up. God's promises are still there. But even with all of that, there's gonna be people around us that don't wish us goodwill. There's gonna be people around us that's not don't mean us good. And that's just a part of life. But then when we hit those situations, we have to go back to the scripture. It says, my times are in your hands. Like, listen, God, I know maybe people around me or circumstances around me is not for my best interest. But God, I'm reminded of what Psalms 31 and 15 says, that my times are in your hand. So God, I know you know when you're going to deliver me from this situation. You're going to deliver me from these body of people. You're going to deliver me because my time is in your hand. Then the scripture from Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit your work unto the Lord and your plans will be established. So when we talk about reflecting on what God wants to do in 2024, as we wind down this month, we have to commit our work to the Lord. That's why some things don't manifest. We're not committing the work unto the Lord. We're committing the work unto other people. Maybe somebody said, well, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. And we just running with stuff, but we've never committed anything actually unto the Lord. Commit our work unto the Lord and your plans will be established. I know when I had to shift things in my own life because everything hasn't worked out for me perfectly, even in business. And sometimes things have been all over the place. And I'm like, God, what's up? What's going on? And I had to look back and like, well, is that something I'm specifically supposed to be doing it? Or am I doing it because I'm doing it? Why am I doing it? And so the scripture reminds us, we got to commit our works unto the Lord and then God will establish it. Again, the word established means you're going to have a sure foundation. It's going to be fixed. It's going to be sturdy. It's not going to be wobbly and all over the place. 
we have to be reminded that we must continue to press forward. And we're reminded in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, that says, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward to what lies ahead, I press on to the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's things that may want to haunt us from the past or reflections or even from last week. Maybe something went down last week or that, that was not in your best interest. God is reminding us in Philippians that we got to forget those things that are behind and we got to press toward the mark. We got to press toward the goal. What are your goals? What are your goals? I like to extract certain things from the scripture. The scripture talked about goals. What are your goals for 2024? Because if we're going to commit our work unto the Lord, we got to say, God, th this is my goals. And I need you to establish it as it aligns with your word. I need you to establish it. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Know that I don't care if God called you from childhood, God called you, and years ago he may have said something to you that this is going to come to pass, and you haven't seen it come to pass yet. God is reminding you to be confident. What does confident mean? To rest assured, to be certain. That that very thing, you fill in the blank of what the thing is that God spoke to your heart. That very thing, he will bring it to pass. He will perform it. 2024 is the year of the breakthrough. When we think about the word breakthrough, it means a sudden or dramatic discovery or development. Breakthrough also means breaking through a barrier. What barriers are you going to be breaking through? Use the balance of December to pray every single day, specifically about the barriers that you want broken off of your life. When we look at the word breakthrough, it also means to achieve success and to make a discovery. What new discoveries are you going to walk into? 2024, when I was looking up 2024, it said it's a leap year. We know sometimes there's certain years that's considered a leap year. And I don't know if there's any Star Trek fans, but I started thinking about Star Trek and I started thinking about the ships in, in, the, in the Starfleet. We know in, in Star Trek, when they start leaping into another dimension, it's suddenly, it's quick. And I believe 2024 is going to be some sudden leap activity going on in our personal lives, in our business lives, in our community. And everything that you put to the feet of God is going to leap to another level. When we look at the word leap, it means a sudden advance. What do you want to advance forward into? Where are you leaving from and what are you going into? There's some more scriptures that I want to share. Second Corinthians 10 and 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but is divine uh, power to destroy strongholds. Sometimes we haven't advanced forward. We haven't leaped forward because there's been strongholds. Pray specifically on any stronghold that God loose that from your life, your family's lineage. Sometimes it's our lineage that is a stronghold. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed and you shall confute every tongue that rise against you in judgment. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against you. No weapon formed against your family. No weapon formed against the community that you reside in. No weapon formed against your business. No weapon formed against your nonprofit. No weapon, no weapon formed shall prosper. As we get ready to go into some other scriptures, I want to pause for a moment and I want us to unmute our line and I want us to share what are we going to break through into 2024? What areas in our life are we going to break from and break into? Any No force, but anybody that want to unmute their line and share what they're going to break into next year. Kamari, Kamani, I see you unmuted your line. You wanted to share something? Okay, go ahead. Yes. I want to break through my goals. Like yes, here. absolutely. And it will be. So you're going to break through those goals. What's one of your goals for next year? Um, save more money. Yes. Work the millions mm -hmm. and be rich. Mm -hmm. I just want to be um, famous. Mm -hmm. I just want to um, break through my success. That is. So I heard you say you're going to have financial wealth. Your yeah. your name is going to be recognized in the land because you talked about recognition. And when God and when people see you, they're going to see the God in you, right? And when yeah. you start to sing, right, through right. your natural ability that God has given you, that's going to expand your borders. That's going to ultimately give you the success that you're looking for. So we touch and agree with you, Kamani, that it is so, and you will break through in that. Let's 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 
I know we're virtually separate, but if y'all want to give him some hearts, give him some love or whatever, we just want to, we want to touch and agree with Kamani that it is. So anybody else want to share? Jenna, I see you unmuted your line. You want to share something? Sure. Um, my, um, I talked about this a long time, but um, uh, my goal basically is to kind of be a voice for the disabled community. Hmm. Be because as I've said before, there's so many to a few groups of people that that um, the world and the pe that people in general do not recognize that the that the people with disabilities can do the things that they can do, but only they have to have it adapted. Mm. So my so my thing is I want to I want to be someone who can I want to be one of these persons that can show people that we can that just because we're disabled doesn't mean we're unable to do whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. We touch and agree with you, Jenna. What I heard you say was you're going to break through in 2024 and you're going to be an advocate. You're going to be a spokesperson for the disabled community. You're going to let people know that just because the disability may be there, but that doesn't mean you're not capable or have the capability to step out there in what God has called you to do. So we touch and agree. Can we give Jenna some hearts? Can we give Jenna some love? What we're doing right now, everybody is just sharing what they're breaking free from and what they're going to break into in 2024. G. Jones, I saw you unmute your line earlier. I wasn't sure if you wanted to share something. Yes. Um, I just want to beat my disease by eating all the right foods and making sure that I um, exercise on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a long journey for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I'm at the tail end. Um, mm -hmm. And when I come out, um, mm -hmm. that I want to be a lot more stronger than I was before. <laughs> yes, so I have a healthy life. Yes. So I just heard you say you want to start eating healthier. You want to beat the disease. And we are touching and agreeing with you. Let's give her some hearts. Let's give her some love. We're touching and agreeing with you, G. Jones, that the disease is conquered in Jesus' name, that you will be able to eat healthier. You're going to set that plan into action. You're going to be able to kick it in the gear and everything will be shifted in your life. We touch and agree that you're breaking free from and you're going into. Um, amen. We would touch and agree. Absolutely. Angelia has shared. Um, anybody else wanted to share before I go into another scripture? We're talking about what we're breaking free from. I am breaking free from fear. I am breaking free from anxiety. I am breaking free from depression. I am I'm breaking free from, uh, you know, altered thinking that is not in alignment with God's will. Because yes, although I might be doing some things in life, but I, it's another level that God I know wants to take me to. And I can't allow those things or those situations to defeat my mind or to hinder me to go forward. So I'm also breaking free financially. So even like how Kamani, because he talked about financial success for next year, I touch and agree with that for myself as well. I know that there's going to be a financial explosion in my business next year, not just for myself, but so that I can help impact the community that I sit in and so that I can be a greater sower into other nonprofit organizations. That is my passion and I know it is so. Anybody else want to share what they're breaking free from and what they're going to break into for next year amen yes Catherine. i truly touch and agree with each and every one uh, that's on the call um i feel i would i want to be in a position to um uh, um create opportunities and, and and find connections um for individuals um that i'm connected to such as with jenna and of course with Kamani and with our group ricochet i want to continue to 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 press the mark and press forward to connecting with other like-minded organizations that will allow uh, individuals with challenges and special needs uh, to be able to reach their goals, to aspire, uh, and to continue to dream and believe in themselves. So I'm asking and praying for God to continue to, to send me to the people, to the places, locations, out of Baltimore, all over, anywhere, out of the, in, throughout the world to make those kind of connections. 
Yes. Yes. So what I'm hearing, what I heard from you was your, your borders are going to be expanded because you just said, even it's not in Baltimore, even beyond Baltimore, Baltimore is the home base. But what I heard you say is that it's going to be expanding be, beyond this point. And you want to also, I heard you say, cultivate programs with such as what you're doing for Jenna and what you're doing for Kamani. But you want to help expand and touch others and with what you're doing with Ricochet. So we touch and agree for expansion. That's the some, some word that I'm coming up for you. We touch and agree for expansion for 2024. So I'm going to read another scripture and then we're going to open it back up for anybody else that want to share what they're breaking into for 2024. Today, we've been talking about it's time. It's time for what? It's time to break into the place of destiny where God has called us. Philippians 4 and 19 says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Everything every person just spoke, the scripture backs it up in Philippians 4 and 19 says, God is going to supply your need. And, and and even if you're still thinking about what is that thing that I need to break through into next year, as, as you're pondering, as you're reflecting on that, apply the word to it. Sometimes we may not know what it will be because we're not sure how we're going to make it happen. We don't have all the resources, but the scripture clearly says God will supply every need according to his riches and glory. Then we go to Psalms 37 and four, and it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This is why one of the other reasons why I was asking people to drop the hearts because I knew this scripture was coming up. God will give us the desires of our heart, but it says delight our ways in him. In other words, we got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things, all the things that we just said will be added unto us. And scripture 37 and 4 of Psalms again says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And then we come to Psalms 100. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God and it is he that has made us. It is he that has made it. It is he that has made us. Sometimes we second guess who we are. God is reminding us, I made you. I created you. I put my stamp of approval on your life. And it says, and not we ourselves. We are his people. Sometimes if you feel like you don't know where you belong, if you feel you out of pocket, if you feel you, you I just don't know. God is saying, you my people. You my people. I got you. And the scripture goes on to say, and the sheep of his pasture. What we remember about when it comes to shepherds and the sheep. Shepherds are very protective of the sheep. Shepherds don't let their sheep run off and one go off. They're going to go find the one that that's missing. That's how God is to us. He says, we are the sheep of his pasture. He said, I got my eyes on you. And even if you stray, even if you flow, if even because God has constantly had to reel me back in. And God is saying, I love you with an everlasting love. He says, you are my people. Don't worry about do people claim you? Don't worry about what people put their stamp of approval on you. God is saying through the scripture in Psalms 100, you are my people. And the scripture, scripture goes on to say in verse four, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The scripture says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So when I had to think about this, what is the gates of thanksgiving? To me, it's when I wake up in the morning, when I open my eyes, when I take that breath and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm alert to my conscious state of being. At that point in time, I need to give God thanks before anything else starts in the day. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That's that personal quiet time that you're going to spend with God. God is saying, I need you to come into the inner court. There was a teaching that we did months and months ago. It was talking about the inner court, the outer court, and the holies of holies. God is saying, you've been in the outer court. You've been in the inner court, but now I need you to come on up a little bit higher and come into the most holy place in me. And the scripture says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto God and bless his name, no matter what the situation might be. Verse five says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. What truth has God spoken on your life? See, the truth that God has spoken on your life will debunk Every naysayer that's speaking negative over your life, it will debunk anything, any words that has been spoken that goes contrary to what God has spoken over your life. What is the truth that God has spoken to you? What is the truth that God has spoken to your heart in your quiet moments? Now you hold on to that truth. 
debunk every other thing that's ever been said to you that's not positive, that's not negative, and hold on to the truth that God has given to you. I want to open back up for anyone else that may want to share what they're going to break through into 2024. And then after that, we're going to have Jenna to sing another worship song. Is there anyone else that wanted to share what they want to break through into for 2024? Okay. It's me. Yes. Hey. Hey, everybody. Um, I was actually... I was crying actually because the stuff you were saying just a few minutes ago. Um, I feel like, well, I know that God was allowing you to use you as a vessel to say this to me because I, um, I was, I'm always in fear. I'm always afraid. I'm always in the spaces that I am to even speak. But I've always been a doer even before Shaq died. I've always helped other people with, you know, whether it was breast cancer walks or, you know, juvenile diabetes, anything. I was there because I'm a doer. Um, but in my walks, um, what I am doing, uh, I started already. Um, it took me to be depleted and I left. Um, I've already started leaving. I've started leaving people behind that can't come into 2024. Um, I've been in spaces, um, right in my area. And just recently I've been, been invited out to things and I am definitely the stamp of approval of a 501c3 and I have many receipts to show my works. And I've been in spaces with people that know who I am, but they don't see me or they don't recognize me, but I've been there for them and allowed them in my spaces. Um, I'm not saying that I do the things that I do for recognition. I do the things to inspire and to uplift, but it has been hurtful. So going into 2024, as I mentioned before, I can't take, uh, certain people can't come. Um, there's many levels of my breakthrough, but I'm in reset mode and regrouping mode for my nonprofit and many other business ventures. And talking about being a millionaire millionaire as you know we've been speaking I know timing is everything it's not time but um I just want you to know I appreciate you Catherine and everybody that I've met on here because it's been people that's not in my space that don't live where I live that always have supported me so they say only a stranger you know so when you said what you said about the naysayers and when I walk into spaces and people look at me like um retarded or like why are you saying I shouldn't use the word retarded because that's not right but look at me like I'm crazy um when I'm introducing myself it should not be a, a elevator speech because you already know who I am but they're more worried about what I'm getting which is nothing but what I'm doing so I'm sorry I took a while to say no, that but no honey it's okay you can express yourself and share it's fine thank you no, but we touch and agree with you with everything that you shared. And I hear your heart and I hear the heaviness. And we're just praying that God lifts that. And we're praying, you know, because I know sometimes, you know, as you mentioned in certain spaces you're going into, they're looking at you like in certain ways and maybe some naysayers. But we touch and agree that even through that process, God is going to begin to um, circle you around individuals that are for you. As you stated, this platform, you, you've met people and, and, and you felt that welcoming. And that's going to continue in your life. As we flow throughout the December month, and even as we enter into December, I'm sorry, into 2024, that's going to continue. Even when you spoke about financial breakthrough, I truly do believe in my very core that a lot of the people that I've been con connected to over my life, that we've been either doing business with, next year is a financial breakthrough year. I, I truly 100% believe that. And, and not just for the vanity of the financial breakthrough, but what we're going to be able to do when we get the financial breakthrough. Many of us have nonprofit organizations. Many of us have things that we want to do in our own families, right? And I believe when that breakthrough happens, we're going to be able to manifest those things. So all the things that we have gone through up to this point has been preparing us. Because see, when we get the overflow, we're going to have to know how to manage it. That's the other thing. Sometimes we may have not, and I know with me, I have to, I have to learn how to manage. I'm talking about the financial overflow. Sometimes we've had to go through seasons to learn how to manage. So when it comes, we're going to know how to do, you know, how to handle it. But I'll also speak to your heart that, you know, the 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 heaviness that's there, that God lifts that and he replaces it with a, a, a joy unspeakable. And I know God is going to do it. So we touch and agree. We drop hearts for you. We, we send you love your way because I know you're in the Virginia area. Um, all is going to pan out for your good because you continue to seek 
the face of God. Before we go to Jenna, is there anybody else wanted to share? Hey, I want to share something. Hey, Miss yes. Catherine, it's Isaiah. Hey, Isaiah. <laughs> Let me tell you what I want to break through from. Yes. I want to break through from um getting into my comfort zone. I want to break, I want to, I want to stop procrastinating. I want to get more close to God mm -hmm. and I want to do more new stuff and travel new places next yes. year. Yes, yes. So I hear you say you want to break through in several areas. You want to break through and, and get closer to God. You want to travel. That means also expansion of the borders. You're expanding outside of the borders of Baltimore. And I hear the excitement in your voice. Above everything, yeah. I heard you, but I heard the excitement in your voice. So we thank God that he's lit a fire. God has lit a fire under you. And that's what I hear from you today. So we touch and agree. We drop love in our, in, yeah, we show Shauna drawing, throwing up a heart for you. We dropping love. We're sending love your way. That the fire that you just spoke of, that's going to be all of December and it's going to flow right into 2024. So we touch and agree with you on that. Is there anybody else want to share uh, before Jenna comes on? Good morning, Catherine, everyone. Hey, this is Violetia. Good morning. Hey. So I'm, I am moving from procrastination to taking massive action. Mm, massive yeah. action. Mm -hmm. Moving from procrastination to massive. I look, I'm listening to the word choice. You say massive action. So right. that, that, what that says to me is exponential growth. That's what I get from that exponential growth, exponential yes. growth. Mm. We touch and agree with you for massive action, which translate into exponential growth. Let's drop some hearts for Valicia. Let's throw up some hands. Let's, let's use this virtual emojis and throw love her way as well because she's about to have exponential growth. Exponential growth. Did I miss anybody before we go to Jenna? At this time, we're going to have Jenna to come back on and sing a worship song. And then I'm going to come back on with some announcements for 2024. And then we're going to close out in prayer. Jenna, you have the floor. I know you hear my cries. You even know my thoughts. You're present in everything, my king, Lion of Judah. I see you in mountains high. I hear you in oceans. You cry out love for me, my king. So line of Judah roar, we won't be silent anymore. Line of Judah roar, mighty battle cry come forth. Line of Judah roar, we won't be silent anymore. Line of Judah roar. Mighty battle cry come forth. I know you hear my cry. You even know my thoughts. You're present in everything, my King, I in the Judah. I see you in mountains high. I hear you in oceans roar. You cry out in love for me, my king, Lion of Judah. So, Lion of Judah, roar. We won't be silent anymore. Line of Judah roar, mighty battle cry come forth. Line of Judah roar, we won't be silent anymore. Line of Judah roar, mighty battle cry come forth. I can see the mountains, they tremble at the sound of your name. 
I can hear the sounds of revival shaking this place. I can feel the winds of your spirit breaking every chain. I can hear the cries of your people singing. Like not due to roar. We won't be silent anymore. Line the Judah roar. Mighty battle cry come forth. Line the Judah roar. We won't be silent anymore. Line the Judah roar. Mighty battle cry come forth. I can see the mountains to tremble at the sound of your name. I can hear the sounds of revival shaking this place. I can feel the winds of your spirit breaking every chain. I can hear the cries of your people singing. Lion of Judah roar. We won't be silent anymore. Lion of Judah roar. Mighty battle cry come forth. I not you to roar. We won't be silent anymore. I not you to roar. Mighty battle cry come forth. I am not you to go. My God, my God. I've never heard that song before, but it I see G. Jones put in the comment, you're touching my soul. I'm telling you that, and then we got Jean Jones. She said, I'm in tears. Your voice is so beautiful. God spoke through you just now, Jenna, as you were singing the words in that song. I've never heard that song, but it is a beautiful song. Lion, I was writing in the chat box as you were singing, Lion of Judah roar. We won't be silent anymore. Mighty battle cry come forth. I can see the mountains. They tremble at your name, breaking every chain. Uh, the sound of revival. My God. I... Mm. God, we just thank you right now. I ask, oh God, even as Jenna was singing, God, the words in the song, you talked about a revival. God, we pray right now, revival break out. Not in the traditional sense. We know revival, we go to revival night, it's a revival at a church, but revival can break out in this very moment internally inside each of us. So break out a revival in us, oh God. Just even as Isaiah was sharing about what he wants to do in the enthusiasm in which he shared, God, allow each of us to have that enthusiasm, God, to break forth in our life, oh God. The song went on to say, we won't be silent anymore. What you have put in our mouth to speak, we will go forth and we will do what you've called us to do. Everyone shared, oh God, on today, what they want to break through into 2024. We ask, oh God, that you seal every word spoken on today, oh God, that we will break free from and we will break through into. The, the, the song went on to talk about how the mountains, the mountains, they tremble at your name. They tremble at your name. The, the song also said, mighty battle cry come forth. Sometimes we gotta have a cry out unto God, even if it's our, our own home, our own personal space. God, we ask that a battle cry that's gonna come out from us, that's going to break every chain. The song talked about breaking every chain. Father God, we thank you for the word of God that came forth on today, talking about it's time. It's time to go forth and what, what you have called us to do. God, we bless your name. We thank you, oh God. And even, oh God, as we reflect on all the scriptures that you shared on today, God, allow that to stay so knitted to our heart, even throughout this week, even throughout the month of December, oh God. God, we bless your name, God, that we know that we're in an intersection in our life. And as we're in this intersection of our life, God, you're about to make some deposits in our heart and our mind that's going to allow us to break through into everything that we have spoken out of our mouth. The scripture often talks about speaking those things as, 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 that be not as though they are. So we did that on today, God. We spoke those things that may not be a reality for us right now, but we spoke those things of what shall be, of what shall be. Father God, we thank you. Of, uh, we thank you in advance for the shall be. We thank you in advance for what you're doing, even right now in our hearts and our mind. 
Father God, as we get ready to wind down our time of connection on today, I pray for each family represented. God, I pray for the communities that they reside in. Father God, we ask that you open doors and make ways out of no way, oh God. And Father God, we thank you for this, just this time to gather, just for soul food, God. We just thank you. We thank you for touching our hearts and our minds on today, God. Continue to strengthen everyone, even as we're off this platform. Continue to speak to everyone's heart, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to share a few announcements, it's, it's, uh, just a couple. So next year, as we flow into next year, there's going to be a brand new Zoom link. So stand by. I'm going to send out an email and a text message um, with that brand, with the new Zoom link. And then also the time change for next year is going to be at 1 p.m. So instead of 12 noon, it's going to be at 1 p.m. We're reaching out to other markets in different time zones. Um, so that way other people that may want to be a part of this one o'clock EST will be good for other people in other markets because we want to expand who's able to get on this platform. So just one slight difference. So instead of 12 noon, it's going to be 1 p.m. Um, next year. And then um, uh, Sunday, February the 4th is when we're going to come together and we're going to have dinner together. It's going to be our night of worship. Um, and dinner. So that's going to be on Sunday, February the 4th at 4 p.m. And then as we flow into the month of March, we're going to kick back into gear with our community outreach. So I'll have more details on that. So those are the announcements. Next year, the time change is going to be from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Um, the first Sunday in February. And then after we kick off the February 4th dinner, every first Sunday, we're going to break bread and eat dinner. So every first Sunday, we're not going to start it on the first Sunday in January. We're going to still meet in January virtually. But then when we go into February, we're going to break bread. And every first Sunday, we'll come together at four o'clock for those that are able to come and, and the doors will be open to everyone. We're going to do it at the SEN studio. And then when we flow into March, that's when we're going to kick back into gear with our, our community outreach, our food delivery for those that may need food. So we just thank God um, for uh, you. We thank God for all of you for coming on. And before I fully close out, is there anything else, anyone else have any announcements? Maybe it's something you're doing with your nonprofit organization or community and you want to share with everyone so we can support. So I'm going to just pause and open up to anybody that may have anything they would like to share. I know Ricochet got a 10th anniversary coming up that we definitely want to support next year. Oh, yes, absolutely. That's on, that's on the one. Oh, my goodness. So um, also, I just want oh, so many things going on. So um, again, Kevin, we thank you. We thank you for just, you know, being obedient to, to you know, what God is sharing, allowing for you to do and to, to just continue to uh, have soul food, to, to, to give us that food that we need for our soul. So we just thank God and we, we pray that God will continue to enlarge your territory as well. I know Isaiah was downstairs and, you know, everybody over there. I said, stay on fire. Do you hear me? He yes. actually, if he's not on fire, he puts the fire in me to continue to do what I do. I'm telling you, because it mm -hmm. wasn't, has, had it not been for God just pouring into him and connecting me to him. I, you know, he, he he helps keep me going when sometimes I don't feel like going. Mm -hmm. He keeps yeah. me, he keeps fire in this house. Um, he talked about, some, what did you say, Isaiah, about sharing the word? Uh, people on his job, it, it's, it's, the, the hunger is out there. It's just that, you know, we as God's vessels need to make sure we share um, uh, what Catherine is doing and, and and share that with others all over and wherever we are connected to. So, Catherine, is there going to be a, a new flyer that you're going to design? And uh, mm -hmm. Isaiah know five million know people. Five million. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, know, yes. He knows a lot of people that, that, that can, can, that can, can, that need this food that you're, yes. that you're connected, you know, he, he, so if you, whenever you get time or however you're going to set it up, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to get a flyer out there and then yes. we'll print some, we'll, you know, we'll print some hard copies and, and absolutely. get it out here to people. Cause people absolutely. are hungry. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, and when we go into next year, so food will be back to every Sunday. Some of you may or may not know I had surgery this year. So I had to shift some things. I had to work some extra hours just to make sure certain expenses was covered. So that's why we had to shift some things. But um, going into next year, we will be back on every Sunday. Again, the only thing is the time is going to change from 12 to 1 o'clock EST. But we will be back to every Sunday. And every first Sunday, we'll actually meet to dine together, to eat together and break bread. But yes, I'm going to be coming out with a new flyer. The new Zoom link is going to be on there. 
and the information about first Sunday dinners. And again, that'll be open to the community. Um, we're not charging anyone for the dinners. It's, it's people, you know, people can come and it's just us the time to fellowship. So yes, I'll be coming out with that new flyer um, and send it to everyone. Also today's um, gathering, I'm, I'm recording. So I'll send this out to everyone to record it. So if you want to send it to someone um, that may need this encouragement, you can send it to them. Um, and anyone that you know that would like to partner with us, because it's all about collaborating and partnering together. Um, even when we do get together on those first Sundays at four, you know, of people that want to minister through, we already know y'all do the mom or dance. We want people to come out and, and to express their love for God through the arts also on those first Sundays. So we thank God. I know Shauna has something coming up on this Saturday in Virginia uh, with her organization, HR Mass. Um, they do an annual gala that's going down this Saturday. I'm going to be going out there to support her, um, leaving on Friday and we'll be with her and in, in, in her uh, community. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful for her and what she's doing. For those that may not know HR Mass, they advocate and support families that have uh, unfortunately had their, their loved one uh, murdered uh, uh, untimely. Um, and Miss Shauna, unfortunately, she went through that. Her son was was murdered. And but now she's an advocate for others. And so Saturday is a time where we're coming together, talking about the mission and seeing how we can strengthen and support her. Um, so definitely continue to 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 lift HR mask organization up as well. Um, and 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 uh, you know, we all are entrepreneurs or 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 doing something in our community. So don't never hesitate to plug what you're doing, um, because what you're doing is making an impact. Anyone else that want to share before I close out? Okay, let me hit this um, button. And we just thank God for today.